Final Cut Pro for iPad 2 was just released, and today I'm gonna to walk you through the process of setting up, recording, and editing a live event using up to four iOS devices. Now, these iOS devices can be a combination of iPhones and iPads, so long as they're running the latest operating system, which is 17.5.1. You'll also need to download the free Final Cut Pro camera app, available right now. I've asked my daughter, Kate, to join us as my subject. Let's get started. For my A camera, I'm using a fourth generation iPad Pro. I'm also using the same iPad to run Funka Pro. I need to point out that the iPad you intend on using for live multicam recording must have an M1 chip or later. Because Funka Pro for iPad now has the ability to store projects and associated media on an external drive, I've clamped a Belkin USB-C hub to my tripod and connected it to the USB port of my iPad Pro. This setup allows me to power the iPad and connect a one terabyte Samsung SSD to one of the three available data ports. For the B-Cam, I'm shooting with an iPhone 15 Pro mounted to a universal cage from SmallRig. I have a Belkin USB hub mounted to the top of the cage where I've connected a Zoom H6 digital audio recorder for capturing high quality stereo audio and an external SSD for recording Apple ProRes. Otherwise, it really doesn't matter which device you use to record your high quality sound, because during editing, you can choose which camera sound you want to use. I'll talk more about that during the editing phase. For my C camera, I'm shooting with an older iPad Pro. For my D camera, I'm shooting with my wife's iPhone 13, mounted in a rig so that I can get some handheld shots. With the hardware setup out of the way, let me show you the new Final Cut camera app you'll be shooting with. Along the right of the UI are buttons for quickly changing the focal length. Tapping this button reveals the camera controls. Tapping the button at the top allows you to quickly change the camera's shooting orientation. Below that is the AF button that brings up a focus distance slider. Dragging the slider will switch the camera over to manual focus, or MF. Use manual focus whenever you need the focus locked on a particular distance. Tapping manual will return focus to AF. And just like the legacy camera app, tapping anywhere on the screen will set the autofocus distance and pressing and holding will lock the focus and exposure. Tapping the exposure button will allow you to adjust the exposure compensation. Tapping auto will bring up options for choosing a different shutter speed and ISO setting. Tapping the white balance button will allow you to dial in the white balance. Or you can choose from a menu of white balance presets. On the left side of the screen are buttons for changing the frame rate, resolution, color space, and codec. These settings may vary depending on the iPhone model you're using. All the settings I'm about to show you reflect the iPhone 15 Pro. You can record at 24 frames per second and as high as 240 frames per second. However, your chosen frame rate will determine your maximum resolution. For example, at 240 frames per second, I can record no higher than 1080p. For color space, your choices are SDR, HDR, or log, but you'll need to switch the codec to ProRes if you want to record log. Closing the panel will reveal a gear for changing a few other important settings. Under Tools, you can enable a grid overlay, and enable exposure indicators, also called zebras, and focus peaking. I always enable focus peaking, which places green lines over areas in the scene that are in focus. I use them to check my subject's eyes to make sure they're tack sharp. Back in settings, use the audio tab to select your audio input device. The app recognizes my Zoom H6 recorder as an input, so I want to make sure that it's selected before recording. And finally, there's a button in the lower left corner for wirelessly connecting your iPhone to your iPad. If you connected a particular iPhone to an iPad previously, the app will remember that iPad. Jumping over to the iPad, I have Funnel Cut Pro already launched. I'll start by tapping the New Project button, then tap New Project. I'll type out Kate, and I'll leave the format to Automatic, which will force the timeline's resolution and frame rate to match the first clip. There's a new storage option that allows you to set where you want your projects and media stored. As I mentioned earlier, you can now store your data on an external SSD, which will keep your iPad's internal storage from filling up with large video files. Tap Choose Location, then navigate to a connected SSD and select it. A multicolored panel then asks you how you want to bring in your media. I'll choose Live Multicam. The next step is to add your angles. Each device must have Bluetooth enabled and be on the same Wi-Fi network. 
Also, all devices need to be signed in with an Apple ID. I'll start with my iPad Pro by tapping the Info button. For angle name, I'll enter ACAM, then tap Connect This Device, then tap Add Angles. The device now appears with a check mark under Connected Devices, and I can see the live camera feed behind the window. I'll then tap the Info button for my iPhone 15 Pro and name this angle BCAM, then connect that device. I'll rinse and repeat for the old iPad Pro, naming it CCAM and connecting. And once more for Jill's iPhone, naming it DCAM. Tapping Next brings me to a window where I set the format of the multicam clip that will be created once I've stopped recording. Now I need to be super clear here. The format and resolution you set in this panel is independent of the format and resolution that you set for each camera. Here's what I mean. Let's say that on camera C, because of limited storage, I had to set the maximum resolution to 1080. After recording my live feed, Final Cut Cam will then wirelessly transmit the 1080p resolution movie to Final Cut Pro in this format, regardless of the format you set here. This means that this particular camera angle will be upscaled to 4K during editing and playback. So if resolution is important to you, just make sure that you set the format to match the device with the lowest resolution setting. If you select 1080 here, recorded movies from other devices that were recorded in 4K will be downscaled to 1080 during editing and playback. You also have the option to record in Apple ProRes, but only if your device supports it. Once you enable this, any device that is capable of recording ProRes will have that option enabled automatically. Notice on my iPhone 15 Pro, the codec is currently set for HEVC with a recording time of 51 hours. As soon as I flip that ProRes toggle on the iPad, the codec changes and the available recording time drops to 1 hour and 23 minutes, based on my available storage. Shooting in Apple ProRes is another reason to save your project to an external SSD. For this shoot, I'm not going to record in ProRes because not all my devices support it. Under Color and Dynamic Range, choose between SDR and HDR. I'll leave this set to SDR. Under Recording Control, you can give your camera operators the ability to initiate the recording of all the cameras. If you don't want this control in the hands of others, turn this off. Under Camera Indicators, you can choose to display recording time left and battery level remaining. Once I tap Done, all my camera angles appear in a 4-up grid. If any of the camera angles need adjusting to make them match better with the other cameras, they can be adjusted right in Funnel Cut Pro. Tapping this button will open up the camera feed in full screen with the familiar camera controls along the right. I'll tap the Exposure Compensation button, then make a small adjustment. When all of the devices are ready to record, a banner will show up on the screen that says, Waiting for Live Multicam to Record. They're basically waiting for me to press the little record button. Now, there's one other step before you do that that's super critical, and I'm going to go over that right now. If you're using headphones, and you should be, you can monitor the audio for each angle by tapping the speaker icon next to the angle's name. Each device will be recording sound from the device's built-in microphone or an external microphone if you have one connected. You cannot record to your iPhone or iPad using two external mics. You can only use one external mic per device. So if you need another mic, you'll need to attach it to one of your available devices. On Jill's phone, I have a shotgun mic connected which I'll later use in the sound mix. With all your mics connected and tested, it's time to record. I'll tap the floating record button to begin. For multicam shoots, I use a clapper, not in order to achieve sync, but in order to check sync later. We take one. Don't you notice how I get quiet? Each recording device displays a red timecode readout at the top of the screen. Each device is transmitting a 720p proxy stream to the iPad for real-time monitoring and playback. In addition to the proxy files being generated for each angle on the iPad, each device is simultaneously recording full-resolution media into the Files folder of the OS. To halt recording, tap the record button again. At this point, you can tap done and start editing your live recording, or you can do another take. After each take, Final Cut Pro will tell you how many multicam clips were created based on those takes. I'll tap done. Each device will then send the full resolution clips to the iPad. 
A media transfer window opens on each device where you can monitor the transfer process. But you don't have to wait to begin editing because a proxy version of each movie was sent to your iPad during recording so that you can start editing immediately while the full resolution versions are being transferred. Once the full resolution versions become available, Funnel Clip Pro seamlessly switches to them. The two multicam clips that were created appear in the media browser. You can easily identify multicam clips by the badge in the lower left of the thumbnail. Tapping one will bring up its film strip so you can scrub through it and play it. If you need to record another take because you weren't happy about something, just tap the camera button and choose Live Multicam, then go through the process of connecting your devices. I'll add this first take to the timeline by tapping the Append button. To view all the angles contained within the Multicam Clip container, tap and hold, then select Edit Angles. Zoom in or out by pinching. You can monitor the audio for the various angles by tapping the speaker icon. Action. Don't you notice how I get quiet when there's no one else? If an angle is out of sync, select the angle that is out of sync, then use the nudge mode of the jog wheel to align it to the audio waveforms. This is why I always record with a slate, because it gives me a distinct waveform spike as a sync point I can align to if the sync is off for some reason. Take one. If you need to return to the default sync, just tap the sync button. Assuming everything is in sync, tap done. I'll start by trimming out the unwanted sync stuff at the beginning of the clip. Then tap the multicam button to bring up the angle switcher. All four angle thumbnails appear below the clip. The clip that you see in the viewer is called the active angle. Using the jog wheel, I'll move the playhead anywhere over the clip and tap angle two. The angle is split at the playhead and switched to angle two. Angle two is now the active angle until you move the playhead again and cut to another angle. I'll undo those two edits. You can also change the switching behavior. Tap the switcher option button to bring up a menu. The default mode is split and switch. Choose switch only. Now when you tap an angle's thumbnail, the angle is switched in the timeline, but the clip is not split at the playhead. What's great about this mode is that you can practice your multicam switching before committing to actual cuts. Action. Don't you notice how I get quiet when there's no one else around me and you in awkward silence. Before we begin editing, we need to decide how we want Funnel Cut Pro to handle the audio. I'll tap the S in the lower left corner of Angle 1's thumbnail to bring up a menu of options. Solo means that this angle's audio will be used for the entire clip duration regardless of what angle is currently active. All the other angles will be muted. This is confirmed by the muted sound icons in the other angle's thumbnails. By choosing On, Funnel Cut Pro will play this angle's audio even when its video is not currently active. Auto Switch will play the audio from the active angle whenever you switch to it, and Off will mute the angle's audio regardless of whether it's the active angle or not. What you choose here depends on how you recorded your audio. I recorded my sound using a digital audio recorder into the iPhone 15 Pro, so that's the audio I want to use as my continuous source. I'll tap the speaker icon for that camera and change it to Solo. Now, whenever I perform a switch or cut, that angle's audio will play regardless of what angle I choose. But what if I wanted to mix in some audio from my C-cam to mix in some background ambience? I'll tap the sound icon for that angle and tap on. When playing back, we're now hearing the sound mix from two separate angles. If the sound from her camera needs to be adjusted in the mix, I'll press and hold on the clip and choose Expand Audio Components. The separate audio components appear below the clip. I'll select the Ccam audio component, then tap the volume button to reveal a fader. Drag it up or down to increase or reduce the volume. You can even make your volume adjustments while the clip is playing back in real time. I don't need reminders of how you don't feel the same. When you're finished, tap and hold, then collapse the audio components. 
With everything set up, it's now time to do an actual multicam edit. Tap multicam and make sure split and switch is selected using the switcher options menu. Move the play to the start of the clip, then tap the angle you want to begin with. Tap play, then whenever you want to make a cut, Don't tap a thumbnail in the angle switcher. Great, that was super easy and super simple. Now it's possible that you cut to the wrong angle, or perhaps you were too early or too late on your switch. For example, perhaps I cut a bit early to angle B. Tap to select edge, then tap to select the edit point. Note that both sides of the edit are selected. Reveal the jog wheel, place it in nudge mode, then manipulate the wheel to trim the edit point right or left. After watching your edit, you may decide that a particular angle is active for too long. Simply move the playhead where you want to make a cut, then tap an alternate angles thumbnail to split and switch the angle at the playhead. You can also swap angles. Move the playhead over the angle you want to swap, reveal the switch options, choose switch only, then tap the angle you want to swap to. At this point, you can share your project as a video, a screen grab from a still frame, or even a Final Cut Pro project file. But for me, the best part is I can open this project directly into Final Cut Pro for Mac and keep working. If you're new to Final Cut Pro for iPad, Mark and I have created an online training course you can access right within Final Cut Pro. Just tap the button in the upper right of the UI, then tap Video Tutorials. You'll be taken to our website where you can watch all the beginner lessons for free. Then if you want to go deeper, you can purchase the advanced part of the tutorial for $29. All the movies will be streamed directly to your device, and the tutorial comes with all the media for following along. Feel free to reach out to us at support at rippletraining.com if you have any questions. And thanks for watching.